Let's talk about emergency preparedness. Not a subject that most people enjoy talking about, but I really find comfort in preparing for uncertain events. Now, emergency preparedness, there's so many aspects to it. Today, we're gonna focus on long-term food storage. introduced to long-term food storage, I had so many questions. So you can do a Google search and try to find out about what containers you're gonna want for which uh, food you're gonna store, or quantities, and you're going to go down an entire rabbit hole. There's a lot of information out there. A lot of it is good. Some of it is severely outdated. I'm going to make it simple for you. I've done the research. I'm gonna actually show you how I do it. I'm going to give you the terminology to get you comfortable in the food storage world. To start, we have a five gallon food grade bucket, which means it is safe to store food in this. There are a lot of questions on the internet on does your bucket need to be a food grade bucket? My recommendation is yes. You can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's. I got this one from Ace Hardware. I've seen them at the Tractor Supply Store. So shop around. The prices are going up on all of the food storage items because of the climate that we live in, um, but you can still find a good deal. And I will put all of the prices for what I paid today down in the description box. The next thing we're going to need is a gasket bucket lid. This has a rubber seal. You can see this black seal that goes around the bottom. And that is going to help keep our bucket as airtight as possible. When you put this lid on, and I'll show you how to do this, we're gonna take a mallet and you're going to basically hammer around the edges that gives it a very secure fit. And then when you are ready to remove this, I will show you there's a little piece of plastic right here that you break off and then you pull this bottom layer off the entire thing and that breaks the seal. And then you're going to use a pail opener. This will save your fingers to get the rest of it open. You're just gonna take it section by section and open each side. Now for what's gonna go inside of our bucket. The way I like to do my long-term food storage is using Mylar bags and put them inside of your five gallon food grade bucket and then seal that off. That's the method we're gonna be doing today. Mylar bags are metallic looking materials that are impervious to gases, which means gases aren't going to escape from this. They sometimes come in different colors, black, white, blue, green, red. This one happens to just be the typical Mylar that you'll see, which is silver. There's no difference in as far as the colors go. Mylar bags come in different thicknesses and it is measured in one one thousandth of an inch. So they call them mills. When you are doing long-term food storage, you wanna keep the thickness of your Mylar bag right around five to seven mils. Anything lower than five, it gets a little bit fragile and is more likely to puncture. You have to be a little more gentle with it. But beware, because on Amazon, they are selling some Mylar bags that are eight, nine, 10 mils. And when you look into the description, what's actually happening is they are products coming from foreign countries, and instead of measuring one side of the bag, they are actually measuring both sides of the bag, which is why it appears to be thicker than all the other ones. Just get your bag between five and seven mils, and you're gonna be just fine. The pack of Mylar bags that I purchased came in three sizes. We have the 10 by 14 bag that has a one gallon capacity and this is what we'll be using today. There is the six by nine, and this one stores one quart. 
Then it comes in a four by six, and this is super, super tiny. And it took me a while, I'm like, what would you put in this? Um, candy, spices, that would be a good option for this little four by six. So as you're looking online and buying bags, hopefully this gives you a reference of size. You can also get Mylar bags to fit a five gallon bucket. So it is a five gallon capacity. When you're using the five gallon Mylar bags and you put that bag inside of your bucket, the bag is going to be about this, this high. It's going to be really long. So the first thing you wanna do is put the bag into your bucket. That way you can fill it and it's easier than having to fill the bag, lift it up, put it in, and you're not gonna get as much, it's gonna be harder to maneuver and get it to fit properly. Make sure you don't cut the extra length off of those large Mylar bags because you can open up the seal at the top and then you can reseal it and then you can keep kind of working down. So it gives you a longer life for the, for the bag itself. When you go to do your research, which I encourage you to do, you're going to find so many ways on how to do long-term storage. I'm gonna show you one way. This is the gold standard today for storing food long-term. And that is taking your food in a Mylar bag, putting in an oxygen pack, and then sealing the Mylar bag with heat and putting that inside of your five gallon bucket. Why would you do both? This was a question that I asked myself because if this bag is going to keep the oxygen out with the oxygen absorber that's inside, why would I need to put it inside of his bucket as well? It feels like I'm spending double the money here. What's happening is this bucket is to protect the actual bag because it is subject to being punctured or to having pests eat through these. What I didn't show you was the oxygen absorbers. These oxygen absorbers are 500 cc's per package. You will see that I am going to be working with rice today. I'm also going to be packaging up uh, dried pinto beans. We're going to actually be doing the work in this video. I'm going to be lifting up these bags. I'm going to be filling them. So we're just gonna pull my hair out of the way. I'm going to turn off the camera for a moment, go wash my hands, and I'll be right back. My hair is pulled up, my hands are now clean. I have disinfected this area and we are ready to get to work. I was a little disappointed when I received my bags in the mail because I thought I was ordering just regular Mylar bags that I was going to just use an iron to seal them off with. And when they came in the mail, I was disappointed because you can see here, it has a, it has a zip lock closure I need this bag to last between 10, 15, 20 years. And by using just this little Ziploc, that's not going to do it for us. We have to actually seal this with heat. But then what I realized was that you can still seal this top area here. And then when you're ready to break that seal and use the contents inside, it does have a little notch. I don't know if you could see that. Let's see. It has a little notch that you can just tear and open up and you're ready to go. I'm going to be using my 10 by 14 bag. So what you wanna do is start by writing with a Sharpie on your Mylar bag. So I put long grain rice, today's date, and then I put the quantity on here, and that's just for my own reference. You open your bag. It can hold 14 cups of rice. My husband and I measured this already. So we're gonna get it opened up. It can stand on its own on the table, which is wonderful. So here I have a bowl of pre-measured rice. I've got 14 cups. So let me get this inside the bag. I would just tip this whole bowl into it, but honestly, I did not think to bring a funnel over here and I don't want to go searching for one. So I'm just going to scoop. And of course I'm using a half a scoop, so I am doubling my time here. While I'm doing this, I will talk to you about oxygen absorbers. In the emergency preparedness community, it is well known that when you are wanting to do long-term storage, you're going to need to use oxygen absorbers. Now, all they are really is iron in a packet. Um, 
And what it's doing is the air that we breathe normally consists of mostly nitrogen and some oxygen. Now, oxygen is the death of any food that you want to store long term. Why is that? Because when you get this food, even straight from the store, there are bugs in it. And yes, I said bugs. You may not see them initially, but likely they are there. There is also larva and there are eggs. Okay. The oxygen absorbers are placed inside of these bags to suck out the oxygen. So I, the only reason I mention that is so that you don't think that by putting in the oxygen absorbers that you're gonna suck out all of the air completely because that's not what's happening. All it's doing is removing the oxygen component so that we can kill anything that's living inside of our food. Okay, let's just put the rest of this in. Bowl is empty. Now that we have filled our bag with rice, we are going to open up and break the seal on this oxygen absorber packet. It's important to know you need to have a container to put these packets into, because as soon as I open this, it's going to activate the contents, which is going, it's going to start using them. We want to save these for the next time that we are going to be packing food. So you're going to want to be quick about it. You're going to take these packs. I don't know if you can't see what I'm doing, but I am just putting them in here as fast as I can so that we can preserve them. I don't know if I mentioned this, but each of these packets is 500 cc's. When in doubt, always add a little bit more because it won't do anything negative to your food. Okay, so I have one here that I am going to be putting inside of my bag. We're going to close the lid on my jar really quickly, set it aside, and then push out as much air as I can from this bag. You can also use a food saver to remove as much of the air as possible from the bag. Now I'm going to turn off the camera, get the iron and the ironing board set up, and I will show you how to seal these. We have a little visitor with us. This is my baby. I have an ironing board with my iron. I also grabbed a level so that I can put the edge of this on top of the level and then I can really press firmly to get a good seal. Now, I did mention that I purchased the wrong type of bags. I'm going to make this work. So mine has the Ziploc enclosure. So what I will do is leave a small section on the end open and I'll explain why in just a minute. So you're going to start by pushing down as much of the air as possible. Then you're going to take, I'm hoping, I don't know how well you can see this. You're going to go as far at the very top of your bag as possible. Your iron's going to be set on high. And then we're going to press very firmly just like this. And we're gonna count. One, two, three, four, five. This will not ruin your iron so you don't have to worry about putting a towel down or anything like that you can go directly onto the mylar to seal it now that looks like i have a really good seal okay it is a little bit warm the reason why i left the side of this bag open is now you're going to ask yourself did i put in my oxygen absorbers yes and then you're going to do one last little kind of press to get as much of the air out as possible. And because I have that Ziploc enclosure, I'm just gonna go ahead and zip that all the way. I know my, I know everything is in there that needs to be in there. And now I'm just going to finish off that seal on the other side. And we're just gonna push down and we're gonna count to uh, five. Two, three, four, five. As I'm sealing these last two bags, I didn't realize this, but I had my steam option on on my iron. Make sure you turn that turn off. That, you turn, turn that turn off. That. You don't want moisture anywhere near the contents of what's in these bags. 
You can do this a couple different ways. You can use a flat iron to seal off this package. And here I have my flat iron. And you can go ahead, turn it on, and then just run it over the top a couple of times until you get that seal. This is my Dyson flat iron, so if you think I'm using this to seal my food storage, you got another thing coming. That's not oh. happening. I just wanted to bring this so I, you have it in your head that you could use a flat iron if you would like. What you want to do, because this is all bundled down like this, it's kind of big and poofy. What you can do at this point, now that your seal is on and your oxygen absorbers are in, is make sure that there's nothing poking on your surface and you can kind of just shake it around and get it to a shape that you want it to be in. As those absorbers activate, they're going to remove the oxygen. So the purpose of the bucket is to protect the mylar itself. After time goes by, oxygen will begin to seep through this bucket. Now it does a really good job of keeping out gases, but as time goes on, those gases are going to permeate even this container after it's sealed. Then it will eventually get through my mylar bag and that's okay because after the initial time frame that we have cleared this of all oxygen, it has killed anything living inside of it. So if oxygen gets into the bag at a later date, that's okay because there's nothing else inside of it living. And so at that point, all we're really doing is trying to keep the food fresh. The other reason for using this five gallon bucket is for transportation. It would be very difficult to carry bags as opposed to keeping them inside this bucket I now have a handle it can also be reused in many ways I can capture water with it if I need to I can put other types of food in here since it is a food safe bucket the possibilities are endless for the so for 14 cups of rice I would need 400 cc's of an oxygen absorber mine only come in 500 if you put in extra that's not a problem it doesn't do any harm to the contents now as you are opening new packages of food whether it's rice beans flour make sure you're looking at the food and looking for any signs of pests um, insects or any type of like spoilage if it looks a little bit off this looks great so we're going to go with 14 cups I wondered as I was going about figuring out what's the best way to store food long term I wondered why can't I just pour rice directly into a food grain five gallon bucket? The reason you don't do that is because even though these buckets are graded to be a food grade level, that doesn't stop air from getting through. And so if your intention is to go 10, 15, 20 years with the items that you have here, you want to prep the very best that you can to have the longest outcome. If my intention is to maybe buy a 25 pound bag of rice and my plan is to get through it within a year, maybe two years, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in my food safe bucket and instead of using a gasket lid like I showed you before, I would use what's called a gamma lid. It has an outer ring that you basically hammer onto the top of your bucket and then the lid can actually screw on and off and it is airtight and that's if you wanted to get in and out of your items more for one to two year storage, not for long term. We're talking 10, 15, 20, 30 years of preserving your food. Okay, so I have got my 14 cups of rice. My bag is labeled. I am going to put in, did I already do it? Do we have to double check? No, I have not put in my oxygen absorber. So don't forget that part. You know that the absorber is good if they are nice and soft and pliable. If your absorbers feel firm, they are likely not going to work. So I now have, ooh, it's heavy. I've got one, two, 
I've got two more to seal, but what I will do is go ahead and put these in here so you can see what we're doing. So here we have three that are fitting comfortably. I am going to put this one right on top and push this down. There we go. I have four one gallon sealed, labeled Mylar bags inside of this bucket. This, I'm not going to seal this now because I do want to wait about two days to make sure that the bag is slightly shrinking in a little because that means that the oxygen absorbers are activated and they are working. When the two days have passed and I'm ready to seal, you put on your gasket lid, you take a rubber mallet and you just start hitting the sides like this until this whole thing gets secured down and you will not be able to lift it. I want to encourage you to start your food storage today. There are so many motivations as to why we do this. I'm thinking natural disasters, droughts, fire. Having a one year supply of food can help alleviate um, additional stressors in already stressful situations. When you start your food storage, it's going to feel overwhelming. I know because it was for me as well. So start small. Each time you go to the store, order an extra few cans of whatever it is, tomatoes. Order a few, maybe five, a five pound bag of rice, even though you already have rice in your cupboard. Anything you can do to slowly start acquiring. What will a 10 pound bag of rice do for you if that's all you have that you've added additionally that week? Well, maybe you're gonna be a little better off than the person next to you who did not think ahead and have that 10 pound bag of rice available. Take it in baby steps, you can do this. The big takeaway is to do it now. Insulate yourself and your family from some of the stressors of today. I know there's talk of a world food shortage. I know that in the area that I live in, we are susceptible to fires and to drought. And by planning ahead and having food storage for my family, that brings me peace. Plus, I get really excited about it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment box below. For now, I'm going to finish sealing my bags so that in a couple of days, when I see that everything looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and put the gasket lid on, seal that up, and put this in a cool, dry place in my house for use at a future time. Long, long future, that is. This is the sensory life. You can tell by the way that I look that this is some work. You are lifting bags of heavy things. You are working around a hot iron, doing a lot of manual labor in this process, which is why hair doesn't need to be done, makeup doesn't need to be on. You can wear whatever. This is not a video of, this is me going out on a Friday night and let me show you the way I look that, like that. Let me show you I look that way while I'm packaging food, no. This is how you would see me any day of the week. I work from home and this is, this is how we are, just on the regular. And now, I have forgotten yet again how many cups are in this bag. So probably for like the third time, I'm going to dump a few back in and count again. This time, I'm not gonna talk. Okay. 